So you're ready to retire, but now what? Five steps you can take when you're ready to retire right now on Retiring Today. This is Retiring Today. I am here with Sean Honkamp and Lauren Merkel. They're both certified financial fiduciaries and retirement income certified professionals. Sean is also a CPA. One fun thing you guys get to do all the time is sit down with people. Lauren, you've been doing this almost 25 years now. People come down, they say, Lauren. Thanks, Molly. <laughs> Did I date you? I was, I was feeling really good Until before. Then. Hey, I just think of all the experience you have doing this. That's it's, right. a, it's a good thing. So you sit down with people, they say they're ready to retire. They're excited about retirement, but there's a lot of stuff that comes along with that. Through the last 25 years, we have been able to witness many people retire. It feels like well, you know, one of the most fun things that we get to do is go on that journey with them. And we get to see them prior to retiring, and then we get to see them go through the anxious time frame of retiring, making all those decisions, and then all the joy that comes with having this luxury of new, newfound freedom of time. And this is how people really feel. I mean, you for many years, you've probably thought about all the fun things that you're you're going to be able to do once you finally do retire and then you get on the doorsteps of retirement six months out 12 months out and then reality hits and you have to start thinking about all these decisions you've never had to make before many of those decisions are permanent decision decisions and you realize how high these stakes are you only want to retire once so you want to get it right and that is a really stressful time frame, but it's something that you want to go through because you want to get to the other side. And this is part of the benefit of the plan and certainly the five-step document that we put together, this checklist we're going to talk about, to kind of guide you through this anxious time, make the best decisions you possibly can for you, so you can enjoy this newfound freedom of time that's on the other side. Yeah, I like that we put this together in five steps, but I do want to cue people in a little bit. There are more than five steps to retirement. Sean, you hope a lot of people do this. We're going to put five on here. It's a great way to get started, but it's, it's a lot to think about, a lot of decisions to be made. There are so many things that we are going to be thinking about, so many things that we help our families think about, address, and plan for. We know this is a new stage of life. They call it the golden years for a reason. This should be the most exciting time, and as you've talked about, that isn't always the case. Sometimes there is a lot of stress that comes along with it. So there's going to be so many things that you're going to be facing that you've never had to deal with before. So these five steps that we're going to talk about today, that is that kickoff. It's that starting point. We never know what else is going to happen for anybody's given retirement journey. You know, there's lots of planned events. You're, you're going to face some unplanned events. And if you go through these steps and be prepared, start thinking about it, it puts you in a better position to react to whatever might happen as part of your retirement journey. That really is one of the primary keys of tackling this journey. There's so many things in life that you can't control. A lot of things happen every single day, every single week and month that we cannot control, you cannot control. But in retirement planning, there's a lot of things you can control. So let's focus on these things, these items, these action steps that you can really control to make this experience the best that you can. And, and one of the hardest parts, I know we, we talk about this all the time, one of the hardest parts is just getting started. Yeah. And that's what these five steps, something like this is going to help you get that started so that you start getting prepared for that stage Let's of life. Let's get it started. <laughs> Let's say start 10 more times. Yes. You can start looking at the list if you want to right now by going to planwithmerkel.com. So that's the document Lauren was talking about. Share that link with a friend. Go ahead and print it out if that's something you want to do. Or you can just look at it on your phone or a computer. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's dive into it, guys. Step number one, test drive your budget. I feel like this is probably a, kind of a foreign concept to a lot of people. We already know retiring is a big decision. It's a big decision when you feel ready now we have to put these other steps in motion so why not take a test drive of what retirement looks like and one of the biggest things or probably the, the most beneficial thing that you can test drive is how much is it going to cost you for the lifestyle that you want to live chances are the last four or five years is probably the highest wages you've ever earned so you've grown accustomed to this lifestyle. Many people we work with don't really have a budget the last few years prior to retiring. And you don't necessarily want to have a budget the, the next couple of years when you do retire. But what does your lifestyle cost? Knowing that going into retirement can be an incredible advantage for you. So this test drive, what it looks like. Take a look at however you spend money. Checking account, uh, credit card, debit card. Look over the last 12 months 
on each one of those and see what you've actually spent. That's going to give you a really good idea of what the last year cost you. Maybe you can take away some of the big one-off expenses, you replaced a roof, bought a vehicle, something like that. But look at what that month-to-month -month ex expense really looks like and then try to live on that for at least six months prior to retiring. What does that feel like? Is that, is that comfortable? Do you feel like you need to spend more in retirement, less in retirement? That's going to give you a pretty good idea of the lifestyle you've grown accustomed to, what it's going to cost you. So when you actually retire and the W-2 wages go away, it's not a big surprise of what you're going to need to spend. And, and some questions and feedback we get on this is that we know life is changing. So yeah, you might be used to spending a certain amount in a certain category, but then they feel like, well, it's going to be different. And the reality is we see that we know certain expenses are going to go down. But now, you've heard this before, every day is a Saturday, so some of these other expense categories are going to go up. So just like you talked about, Lauren, the, the best indicator of what we think you might spend going forward is to have a good sense of what that lifestyle looks like right now, and then some are going to change up and down, and, but we're in a good spot to know what that plan looks like. Yeah, that frustrates me because if you search retirement income, one of the first things that come up or comes up in a lot of articles is you'll need to replace 80% of your income in retirement. And yes, for some people that's going to work, but I know you guys have done this a lot. It doesn't work for everybody. For some people, just by accident that they land on that number, that works. But for most people, you want to know what your, your real lifestyle costs so you have a really clear snapshot, a really clear vision of what that's going to cost you. And if it happens to be 80%, fantastic if it happens to be a hundred percent or because now you have all this extra time every day is a weekend maybe it's actually 110 percent that is a real experience that we do live every single year with people making that transition and, and a really important part of the important part of that budget is, is inflation We're, we work with families sometimes you already have that budget you kind of know that hey I, I expect to spend this over a certain time frame and then as we talk to you about your planning sometimes people may forget to factor in inflation so getting that budget now, knowing what lifestyle looks like today, we need to plan for a 20, 30, 40 year retirement journey. We need to factor in inflation and have an understanding of what that budget's gonna look like throughout that retirement journey. Step number two, set a social security plan. Guys, it sounds so simple, <laughs> but it's really not. You, you now know how much money your lifestyle costs, right? Okay. We have this number in mind. Now we need to figure out where is that income gonna come from? Almost everybody has access to social security. And Social Security for many retirees can represent anywhere between 25 to 30% of your income over the course of your retirement. So it is a big deal. And you have up to 81 different options when it comes time to elect your Social Security decision. It's so not it's simple. not, it's not, now you're 62, let's take it, yeah. or your, your full retirement age, let's take it, especially if you have a spouse. If you have a spouse, that's where a lot of the, that complexity really comes into play. Or maybe you're divorced, uh, you used to have a spouse, uh, maybe you're widowed or widower. There's a lot of things that go into that. So we need to determine from all of those di different options based on other income sources you have, based on what the, the lifestyle costs are, what is your best strategy with Social Security? And one of the things that almost every family out there is looking for as they get to this stage of life is confidence. So we've already talked about the expenses. That's a big part of having that plan. Now we're talking about some of those income sources being Social Security. We need to start thinking about that and feel confident in what that picture looks like. We know you guys are out there looking for that confidence. You're, making, you're facing a huge decision in life on when to retire. And you want to feel confident that you're not going to run out of money before you run out of time. And these steps are going to put you in a great spot to feel better about what that situation looks like. And oftentimes people are surprised when we do that Social Security analysis for them as far as the difference of lifetime retirement income they can receive from the very first choice, right, electing right away at 62, versus the optimal choice that is actually the best for you considering all the variables. In our online to retirement, online journey to retirement workshop, we go through this with our hypothetical couple, John and Sue, the difference between their least valuable and most valuable, they're optimized, was a little bit over $80,000 of lifetime income from Social Security alone. So as you're looking to accomplish your retirement income goals, what an incredible opportunity you have just with this, this investment, really, you've been paying into for probably 40 years. Now it's time to get the best return on that Social Security investment.
You heard Lauren say that $80,000 difference. Your ears might have perked up. So I want to make sure you understand how you can see exactly what he's talking about and it is our online journey to retirement workshop. This is a complimentary workshop. You can sign up for a time and a date that works for you and then watch that workshop, see John and Sue, see how they select Social Security and see a lot of the other the decisions that they make. We will continue talking about the five steps to take when you're ready to retire next. Retirement is all about staying active and spending time with loved ones. But you may still wonder if you can have the retirement you've dreamed of. Download our complimentary Retire Your Way toolkit to receive a copy of Lauren Merkel's new book, Retire Your Way, and five guides that'll help you turn your retirement worries into confidence. Go to retireyourwaytoolkit.com. Don't just dream about retirement. Take action and retire your way. This is Retiring Today. I am here with Sean Honkamp and Lauren Merkel. We're talking about the five steps to take when you're ready to retire. If you find yourself daydreaming more about your hobbies, spending time with grandkids or travel, you're ready to retire. Congratulations, but you might wanna take a look at our uh, five-step guide. It's at planwithmerkel.com or continue to talk about the steps right here. So we're on step number three, coordinate health insurance. This is a big one, Lauren. It's a big one, and we have conversations about healthcare all the time, which we should conversations that we have maybe, Sean, every other week. I mean, it, these happen frequently, and it just happened to me a couple of weeks ago where a family came in and they, we were trying to determine when they should retire. Now, in their mind and in the plan that we built, we were saying retire at 65, and the thought process on their side is always, at 65, I'm eligible for Medicare. I don't have to go to the open market, don't have to use COBRA insurance. I'm eligible for Medicare, let's do that. But then as we talk about their ambitions to retire, and this, this happens too, as you get closer to retirement, you start wanting to retire sooner. You get really excited and you want to, to move that retirement date up. This is what they were talking about. And they just were curious, what does it look like if? What happens if we don't wait till 65, we actually retire at 63 or even 64, but in the back of their mind, they're always thinking, well, now I'm not eligible for Medicare. How much is health care gonna cost me? And healthcare is expensive, especially if you don't have a large group COBRA plan that you can use. If you're going open market as an individual, maybe fifteen hundred a month, maybe yep. two thousand. A lot of money. As a couple, double that. It's a lot of money. But what we what we walk this this family through is, and this is a question that we have to answer that you will have to answer is how much is enough. How much is enough for you, and what is the cost of not having that extra time? that you could be retired, especially since you want to retire so badly. So as an example, if you don't retire at 63 and you wait till 65, and if, if our projections in your plan, it says at 60, at 90, you're gonna have 1.2 million left over, that's going to go then to beneficiaries and charities, versus you actually reclaim those two or three extra years, you retire at 63, and now you get a couple extra years to live the life that you really want to live while you're, while you're young and energetic and, and mobile and you have this ambition. And the projections you're in your retirement plan at age 90 now say you're going to have a million instead of 1.2. At age 90, are you going to care more about the $200,000 difference that you could pass on? Or are you going to care more about those two extra years that you were able to reclaim while you could go live the lifestyle that you really wanted to live? Now, there's only a couple people that can answer that question, and that's you. But you have that information at your disposal, and we know that this is, this is the equation that many pre-retirees are trying to work through as they're trying to identify what their retirement date is. That information really helps. Yeah. And in our experience, we get to see both the, the voluntary situations where they're fully in control and you can decide, but we also live the involuntary side of it. You know, a couple that we're working with, I just met with them in the last two weeks, he went through a health event and you know something that, that they're dealing with emotionally and new information and they've always planned for him retiring at 65 but now we were able to review their plan with them give them that information you know talk more about you know cobra you know versus open market and medicare which we get a ton of questions around that it's very confusing 
but they were they had the information they needed and now we have that plan they're going to feel better they know they can retire sooner if they need to they're still gathering this again new event so it's those involuntary events that may or may not happen to you we talk about planned and unplanned all the time these are certain things that can happen during that retirement journey that we need to be in a position to react to. Yeah, in either scenario, there's a cost. There's a cost of the extra cost of the health care between, say, 63 to 65. There's also a cost of your time, right? You're working two extra years where you really don't want to work, or you're paying maybe an extra 25000 or 50000 for the health care cost. You know, if, if you're looking at your plan and that's not going to make a meaningful difference long term, Paying that extra twenty-five to fifty thousand for an extra two years of the freedom and flexibility of retirement and hanging out with the family and grandkids—that that decision is a lot easier to make when you have that information. Yeah, it doesn't make that that cost seem so insurmountable when you see it like that. And then you'd also have to cross your fingers and hope it works. You see how it's going to work right. out. Okay, step number four, give notice. Guys, this looks a lot different for everybody. Well, what an exciting time, though. I mean, leading up to that, knowing that you're maybe going into your office or work for the last time, <laughs> at least without people knowing, so you know your countdown's on. This can feel really exciting if you've got that plan. So giving notice, it's gonna look and feel different for a lot of different people. Everybody's work situation, you know, their their day-to-day -day job responsibilities can be drastically different. Just in the last week alone, there's two different scenarios I've went through. So we're, there's a couple that we're working with, the husband and wife, and the wife's turning 65 next month. She knew she wanted to retire around this time frame and then finally got there. So she went into her employer, gave that decision, planning for two weeks. And her employer, <laughs> her manager asked her to give her to stick around for three months. And they were like a little torn back, you know, because they already have some vacation plans. So her employer had a different plan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I already had a plan in place yeah. for them. So they figured out some compromise, you know, it wasn't drastically different, but that was a different experience than what they were expecting. And then in another scenario was like we did a 15 minute call with a, with a couple this week as well and that individual knows he was he was taking on a lot of stress with this position um, he is younger he's not fully retiring but he'd already given advance notice to employers several months prior that he wants to be done at the end of the year you know he's just ready for a new stage of life and he's giving them more time to be able to figure out you know what that looks like there's maybe even a chance he stays with that employer but he's certainly looking for something different or maybe he does end up you know getting into something different but we know giving notice is a big step you've got to be emotionally ready you've got to be financially ready before you take that step to give that notice and you want to make sure you coordinate the the giving of that notice with your plan especially if you have a corporate pension or even a, a government or municipal pension because there's paperwork that's associated with it and those pensions typically don't move as quickly as the movement with your 401k or 403b plan you're gonna to have to fill out some paperwork they have a packet for you uh, you're probably going to have, you will have to decide which of the options you're going to select. Make sure that is integrated within your plan and then allow the administration company to process that paperwork. So we're, we're in total talking maybe four weeks, six weeks, even three months in some time. So you want to make sure that you're appropriately prepared for that process as well. Another process too is your 401k, which you want to kind of deciding what you want to do with your 401k. Oh wait, that's, that's step five. Never mind. I was jumping ahead. <laughs> that's a tease. <laughs> that's yes. a tease. In the, biz. In the biz, pension, we call that the tease. Yeah. A pension made me think of, oh yeah, if you don't have a right. pension, what <laughs> options do you have? I was also thinking while well, you guys were talking that this is a tricky time for people to, um, it's risky. It's risky to give notice. So yes, some employers are going to say, please stay on. And maybe you're thinking I'm going to stay on a month and the employer goes, there's the door. And then you don't have that health insurance lined up or the retirement income plan lined up. It, this is a risk for well, some people. Yeah, immediately that, that brings uh, to memory a, a situation that one of our families went through. She was anticipating giving a six month notice just to be nice to the employer, right? She had a more of a higher level position, a lot of responsibility, needed to give time. She felt like she needed to give the employer time to bring somebody in and then she could train them. Well, she went in and gave notice and the employer did have a different plan and said, actually, your services are no longer welcomed. <laughs> now, if you were just doing that without the comprehensive plan to know that you could turn on this income from your investments or Social Security or wherever that income you need to come on, that's, that's that much harder to go through. Her, it didn't feel good. That wouldn't feel good. You're trying to be respectful of the employer and then they turn around and do that. It doesn't feel good. But from a financial situation, an income situation, a retirement situation, she's doing just fine. She was fine because you'd already set the plan in place and all you had to do was turn it on just a few months earlier than you would have That's had right. it worked out how she wants to. That's interesting. Yep. We'll talk about that fifth step to take when you're ready to retire next.
Retirement is all about staying active and spending time with loved ones. But you may still wonder if you can have the retirement you've dreamed of. Download our complimentary Retire Your Way toolkit to receive a copy of Lauren Merkel's new book, Retire Your Way, and five guides that'll help you turn your retirement worries into confidence. Go to retireyourwaytoolkit.com. Don't just dream about retirement, take action and retire your way. Welcome back to Retiring Today. I am here with Sean Honkamp and Lauren Merkel. We promised you five steps. So here it is, the fifth step. You're ready to retire. Now what? Five steps to take when you're ready to retire. Number five, consolidate accounts. What does that mean? It means now is the opportunity, right? We're done working. You've accumulated this, we often say, junk drawer of investments, possibly. We know none of that is junk. It's your financials. It's your retirement balances. But through that accumulation stage, you'll have, you potentially opened up several different accounts. And now what a wonderful opportunity to consolidate. We know this consolidation of people's accounts. It can provide confidence. It can provide clarity and certainly provides control. So now you have an opportunity to identify all the accounts that you have through that current employer that you're retiring from, along with maybe all these other outside accounts that you have, and get them consolidated. We hear all the time from families we're working with, once they consolidate those balances, it feels like you have a bunch more than you thought you had, and that feels really good. So it's about identifying what opportunities do you have, what do you want that to look like, it impacts a lot of different parts of that plan. We've got to think about taxes as we consolidate. We've got to think about the investment plan. You know, we've got to think about the income plan. So there's a lot of opportunity to consolidate all these accounts, and there's a lot of action steps that need to be thought of as you do consolidate. And you want to make sure when you do go through that consolidation effort that you do it the right way because there's a lot of mishaps that can take place as you're moving a 401k plan to your IRA or you're moving other IRAs around to consolidate. One of the themes that we have seen over the last 25 years is as you age, you are looking for financial simplicity, especially as you go through this, this stressful time of making all these permanent decisions around uh, retiring, uh, transitioning from the working to the retirement world. That's stressful enough. You get past that, you get beyond that. And now you're really looking to have things more uh, simple. Sean, this, this took place this month. I wasn't in the visit, you were, but I saw this individual come in and she just had a, a tub sure. yeah, of the full the, it was tub a, of info. It's not uncommon that people will bring a lot of documents, but she had a tub <laughs> of documents. And this was her first visit. And I, that's what she was expressing to you is let's make things simple. I have this 401k plan here. I have this IRA over here. I have this non-qualified account. I have these social security statements. I got these Medicare letters, right? Sean, help me, <laughs> yeah. help me make this simple, make this transition easy. And that's part of the consolidation efforts. And she threw everything at us because again, that's where she's at. She was at that stage of life where, hey, I've got all this stuff. What do I need to be thinking about? What do I do? What can I do? And that's gonna be a natural part of our process where we're going to be able to help her review all that information and start sim you know, making it way more simple, just like you said. Do you find sometimes that people still have old 401ks with previous employers that they haven't worked for for a long time? Do you have to track all that down or what's that like? Well, and sometimes they forget about sure. it, which is part of the benefit of that consolidation effort as well, even as you go. So having four or five different employer plans or even one out there can be problematic. Uh, sometimes people bring in a statement or a letter they got from the Social Security Administration saying there is this account out here somewhere and they're like, I forgot completely about that. That was from 20 years ago. And so consolidating uh, as you go, but certainly at point of retirement or after shortly after you retire is, is definitely a beneficial thing. And it's not just the accounts that have the balances that we need to be thinking about. We have a lot of insurance products. You know, at this stage of life, we often get a lot of questions around, you want to know, well, which, you have this life insurance, or maybe you have this group coverage through your employer that you have an opportunity to maintain and start paying more for if you want to. So you want to be reviewing those life insurance products, which again are part of your financial picture. Those are accounts as well. So we need to be thinking about all of that and identifying, you know, at this stage of life, do you need life insurance? Should you have life insurance? That's the type of questions we get around those strategies as well. Yeah, and if you don't, those are some premiums you don't have to pay anymore. So as we're looking to fund that lifestyle, that might actually cost you a little bit more post-retirement than what you were, it cost you pre-retirement that could be an area that you can go to to free up some of that cash flow. So the document that we have put together is 
at planwithmerkle.com. So it's up on your screen right now. This is a great uh, kind of reference guide, something and you could print this out for yourself. Maybe share the link with a friend who you think could benefit from this, but you can go back to it and, and reference this as you're thinking about getting ready to retire. So guys, it's an exciting time. Here's the one thing too, if somebody watched this and now they're feeling sort of overwhelmed, like, oh, I hadn't thought about that, that or that. I don't want the takeaway to be for that person, I can't do this, right. it's too much. I want this to be an exciting time for people because you know it is and you know that they can get through these steps and get to that, that other side. Yeah, let's put the excitement back into retiring. And that's what this checklist is really intended to do. Get started, this is an easy way to get started. You know you're going to have to retire, you want to retire, you know you're gonna to have to go through certain steps. Let's make it easy and let's get the excitement back up to here as opposed to being drowned out by all the, the anxiousness. Yeah, because she brought the tub in, right? But Absolutely. she left with a binder that was a plan. She, Generally, that's that's how it works. That's she's easy. going to. That's, that's the not, plan. Not the same day. The man, yeah. Oh, you can't do that in one day, guys? Come on. She left with a much lighter tub because most yeah. of that is now sitting with us and now we get mm -hmm. to do our job and help her feel that much better as she approaches her retirement. And then she will <laughs> leave with a binder and a plan. It'll Absolutely. be all in one spot with a plan to retire. So that's the exciting part of this. So we want you to feel excited about this uh, stage of your life. Again, that, that guide, five steps to take when you to retire is at planwithmerkel.com. We like to try to make this show exciting too. We talk about all of the aspects of retirement. We thank you for joining us. This is Retiring Today. Do I have enough saved for retirement? When should I take Social Security? Which Medicare option is best? How do I plan for inflation? Sometimes the road to retirement starts with more questions than answers. We're here to help. Join us for our upcoming Journey to Retirement workshop. Get answers and start your retirement journey with confidence. Our online workshop includes information on Secure Act 2.0 and changing retirement rules. Visit retirewithmerkle.com to register for an upcoming workshop. Your retirement journey starts now. Thank you.